All you need is this one simple step to add transitions inside of Next.js. In order for transitions to work effectively, you just need to know where you should add transitions. Typically in a Next.js app, whenever you go to any page, then it just shows a page right away without any really cool transitions, which may not be a really good experience. And if you add transitions in the wrong spot, then your app will re-render a lot and that's not exactly what you want. Now, not to mention the additional caching capabilities inside of Next.js really limit us where we can really add transitions as well. What we really need is as the user refreshes the page and goes to your app, you want this really cool transition. When you go to another page, then you also need a transition. So it's a more seamless experience compared to just a abrupt experience that we saw earlier. So that's exactly what we are going to build in this specific video. So without further ado, let's get started. So how exactly will you add transitions inside your app? Well, if you want to add transitions, we will be using a library called as Framer Motion. It is a very popular React library that allows you to add transitions, different kinds of animations in the most performant way possible using this specific library. Now, what this app does is that it converts any div into a motion.div, which allows us to add properties such as animate, transition, opt into different transitions, and so on. Now, the app that we are trying to build is called Cozy Corner. Now, this app is already pre-built. It is built with Next.js and also uses Tailwind CSS for styling. Now in this specific app, whenever you go from one page to the other, we pull in more information about that specific page. It is currently divided into two parts. One is the best sellers and all products. Now let's take a look at the code really quickly so that we can learn how to add transitions later. This specific project uses the app router from Next.js and in the app router in the page .tsx, it simply displays our best sellers and all products. Now we are basically iterating through a list of products, which is stored inside of our JSON file. If you see a property called as boosted equals true, that means it's going to be shown in our best sellers, but it also has other properties such as name, description, price, image URL, and so on. Now our entire application also has a header component as well, which is currently stored in layout. And this header component again is over, it routes to the main page. Similarly, if we go to individual pages, when we route from one page to the other, then again, all we are doing is fetching the specific product ID based on the ID from the specific URL and then showing it onto the page. Well, you might be wondering where would you add transitions instead of Next.js? Well, there are a few places where we can add transitions. Now, one spot is the layout. Why layout? Well, because layout is a shared UI between multiple routes. It is basically the topmost component. For example, this is the layout file. So let's say we were to add a motion.dev here itself. What would happen is that our entire application would get the transition animation. All we need to do is inject this somewhere. But there's one more spot where we can add transition, and that is the template.js file. Again, this is very similar to layout because it wraps each child layout or page. But the problem with this is caching. Now, unlike layouts that persist across routes and maintain state, templates will create a new instance for each of the children on navigation. Layout is going to try to cache as much as possible between pages, but template is going to re-render each and every time as you navigate from one page to the other. And if we were to decide where exactly we want to add transition, it is when we click on a specific page, that is we are navigating to different pages. So in that case, a template file is a better spot to add layout because we don't want any caching capabilities. So let's go ahead and add Framer Motion inside our code base. So what we would do is create a new file called as template.tsx. Here, let's go ahead and copy the code from the page and paste it here. And it takes children and then all our routes are going to be wrapped by this specific template. It's going to re-render every single time. Now, what we could do is add Framer Motion here. So if you head over to the docs and then here we look for spring and what we could do is just literally copy this specific function and then modify it. So now let's convert this from motion from div to motion.div, which make this function a from framer motion div and it has additional capabilities to animate to transition. And here let's just import motion from Framer Motion. All right, so now this div is powerful. 
Now, what we could do is just paste it and let's just see what happens. Now, as we do that and go to the page, now you can see over here that it's giving us an error that we do need to make it a client component. You may then wonder, well, if we make template a client component, for example, by adding a use client directive here, then wouldn't this mean that our entire tree is now going to be a client component because of the limitations of server and client component where anytime the root component is a client component, all its children are also going to be client components. If you visualize this, then if template is a server component, then this is fine because these are all child components. But let's say, for example, if template is a client component, then all these children are also going to be client components. Well, not necessarily, because if we go to the documentation, then we can use a children pattern to basically say that, hey, it's totally okay. And not all the children are going to be client components, even though template is in fact a client component, thanks to the children pattern. For that reason, we can safely make this a client component. And now we can go ahead and try out if transitions work. So for example, if we head over to localhost 3000, we can already see the transition that is already working. But it's since we just copy pasted what we got from Framer Motion, it's not exactly what we want. If you wanna take your Next.js skills a bit further, I'm also running a workshop on Next.js, which is a hands-on workshop, which will cover everything that you need to know to take your Next.js skills to the next level, just like we covered in this specific video. Please check out the link in the description below and sign up to that. So to make what we want, what we could do is we could add a initial property where we can say the Y axis and the opacity initially is going to be zero as well. But then when you want to animate, then the Y axis is going to be zero. And then the opacity is going to be 100. So we are saying that start from Y20 to zero and then increase the op opacity. And lastly, we also need a transition. We want to tell Framer Motion that, hey, this is the transition we want to use. So we can say type is going to be spring and then duration can be whatever. That means how spring fast or slow you want the transition to be. So now if we do the same thing, you can refresh the page and now there you go. See how the page goes from the bottom to the top and slowly transition. And then you can play around with the properties in Framer Motion to see what kind of transition that you are looking for. If you don't want spring, but let's say you want ease in, then that is another one that you can use as well. You can see how beautiful ease in looks like as well. And it slowly transitions from one spot to the other. Well, this is exactly how you would add transitions inside of Next.js. So that's it. That's one simple thing you need to do to add transition inside of Next.js. All you need to do is add framer motion, motion.dev inside of template file to add transitions in all your pages, which is pretty awesome. If you want to learn more topics in front-end development, or specifically Next.js, then comment below and let me know what else puzzles you inside of Next.js and you haven't figured out yet, or something need more guidance on. Comment below and let me know. And to further learn about server and client components, then you can check out this specific video on use cases when you should use server and client components inside of Next.js. Or you should also check out and subscribe to my channel as I'm planning to release a crash course on Next.js very soon. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.